Hello, today we are going to talk about how one can build a very engaging user experience uh, and specifically this is a case of uh, an augmented IT recruiter so uh, we are trying to build an applicant tracking system which is uh, used primarily by IT recruiters and uh, we are using uh, containerized microservices powered by NLP and ML uh, natural language processing and machine learning to make it so engaging that the IT recruiter should feel that it's a natural extension of uh, his work and it should snugly fit into his daily routine that it should feel as if uh, uh, he is not uh, taking any extra efforts to uh, to make or to use this application so uh, and he should, uh, the recruiter should feel like coming back again uh, uh, to use the application and he should stay uh, engaged and invested uh, for a long duration. So that is the uh, objective uh, and we'll talk about it more in detail. So let me first introduce myself. So I am Vinayak Joglekar. I am a co-founder and CTO of Synerzit. And I have been uh, myself a technology enthusiast building software products and uh, as uh, I progressed in my career I started training people and putting together teams of software engineers and testers and DevOps professionals and UX professionals to help my clients to build software products using the lean and agile method. So I have been a hands-on practitioners of uh, practitioner of these techniques. I was also a speaker at the 2008 Agile conference. Recently, I spoke at uh, the DevOps summit in India, and I have been mainly interested in DevOps, UX, and continuous delivery. Uh, and here's my uh, blog link, so you can always refer to it later. So I have a lot of interesting blog articles there. So uh, without further ado, let me get down to what we are trying to build here. So the problem statement is that recruiters in software companies who hire three to five years experienced professionals. So this is the sweet spot I'm talking about where uh, we are not talking about recruiting university graduates or recruiting senior professionals. Uh, this is uh, primarily the sweet spot of three to five years experienced uh, software professionals in technologies like uh, which are very popular like say, let's say JavaScript where you get you are literally inundated with uh, uh, resumes and uh, you know so our objective is to build an app that would magically parse and rank hundreds of these resumes in a jiffy and uh, so that uh, the recruiter is able to uh, segregate what he uh, or prioritize what he needs to do uh, by uh, by looking at only the top uh, top ranking candidates as per uh, certain norms uh, that he would be able to set up. Uh, this whole thing is using natural language processing, machine learning, so it should not become too complex for the uh, for the recruiter it should be very smooth and he should not see what is under the hood and he should be able to uh, re literally keep himself engaged uh, and he should feel like returning time and again to use the app it should be an empowering technology the technology should empower the user and he should uh, feel as if it's an extension of his uh, daily routine tasks uh, which is uh, snugly getting into his routine without really having to take uh, any extra efforts. So that is the tough challenge that uh, we have. So let us dive into more details. So uh, a caveat here is that we are not going to cover everything uh, that we did because it took us close to two years to build this app and it is very hard to uh, cover that in this short 45 minutes. So we are only going to take some salient features, technical challenges that we faced and uh, 
uh, what we did to overcome those technical challenges and how those technical challenges were really related to the problem statement and achieving the objective that uh, is stated uh, in this slide. So uh, we uh, modeled, uh, so first let me uh, step back a little and uh, uh, you know uh, give you some background about uh, what is an engaging user experience and how does one go about building one. So we looked at uh, a lot of literature and we came across this model. Uh, this was this is a book written by Neer Iyal where he talks about a hook where in a session the user needs to start the session. Uh, he should feel like starting the session with your app by some kind of trigger which could be an external trigger or an internal trigger. So let me explain what is an external trigger. An external trigger could be an email that uh, somebody has sent or a message that a friend has sent on Facebook or there is a push notification that appears on your mobile phone. So all these are examples of external uh, uh, triggers. What is an internal trigger? An internal trigger could be you are bored and you want to take a look at Facebook or you are hungry and you want to look at Zomato or you want you are suddenly remembered that uh, you know you, your uh, uh, bank balance uh, may be running low and you want to go and check your bank balance. So all these are internal triggers. So some trigger has to start the session. So uh, in the case of Facebook let's say you have a push notification which says that uh, you know, it's uh, your friend's birthday and you want to, so you open the app and uh, you see a lot of uh, postings by your friends and then you feel like uh, posting something yourself uh, and uh, you want to post a picture of yours with your friend whose birthday happens to be today uh, and uh, you want to wish him uh, on his birthday. So that is the action that you would like to take. So uh, uh, every trigger leads to finally an action and then the reward would be that your friend likes your uh, post and maybe some friends which are common between the two of you, they may also like your posts and you might want to go back and uh, check who has liked your post and all that. So that is the reward that you are getting and it's variable reward so you don't know uh, how many of your common friends are going to like it and whether uh, your friend will see it today or tomorrow. So there is some kind of suspense there. So the excitement is in checking and then when you actually get, uh, when you actually see that uh, people have liked it or people have uh, commented on it, that's when uh, you really get the reward and it's not sure. So uh, you uh, have that resolution of suspense that happens when you actually see things happening. So uh, it is not a fixed reward that you get every time, but it's there is some little variation that happens, which makes uh, which gets more, uh, which makes uh, people more excited. So this is uh, your routine, uh, Facebook routine, wherein. Uh, for some reason you open the app, it could be an internal trigger, you are bored or it could be an external trigger, you get a push notification, you do some kind of posting, you see and you get the reward uh, when you see people have liked it and all that. So you go on doing this repetitively because it kind of, uh, you get kind of hooked to this routine of uh, posting and uh, checking or liking others posts and commenting and all that. And then uh, after a few days you realize that uh, you have a lot of investment that has gone in Facebook. All your photos are there, all your friends are there, all your postings are there. So even if uh, you, there, if, it, if it were that there is some other app which is better than Facebook, you are not going to move away from Facebook. You will stay invested in Facebook because of uh, the history, your investment, your uh, photos, your uh, friends and all the relation, everything is there. So that's the last uh, fourth part that is the investment. So that is how people stay hooked 
by going through this repetitive cycle so trigger action reward and investment so what we are uh, with this is this was a very convincing model and uh, we thought that let us build our app along these lines uh, so coming back to what we are trying to build so here's a, a, you know uh, initially uh, obviously people are not going to uh, have internal trigger where if somebody wants to uh, start recruiting professionals he is not going to obviously open this application because they don't know about this application so initially at least it will be an external trigger such as a job requirement which comes and a suggestion from somebody in the company that look this is the job requirement and why don't you try this brand new application to recruit people for this and you know you receive a bunch of resumes so the action is there are about 20 to 50 freshly sourced resumes which come to you from various portals or from various agencies and from your HR department, from employees referrals because the job posting has gone viral, it is already published in LinkedIn, it is already there up on your website. So you have, uh, and it's a, a run-of-the-mill JavaScript, three to five years experience professional. So you'll most likely get uh, 20 or 50 of those resumes and now you are uh, left with the task as a recruiter of deciding which ones are the ones which should uh, really get forwarded so uh, so the reward here in this app is you point this uh, uh, app to this folder containing 20 to 50 uh, of these resumes and in a jiffy you are able to get an excel tracker which is basically an excel worksheet with a row per candidate and some kind of suitability score that is assigned to every resume and you have them in the descending order and you can also see a more detailed worksheet in the same workbook which gives you an idea as to from on what basis are these scores calculated so uh, what is the uh, weightage that is assigned to various criteria of suitability like what is the uh, education what is the experience in which technology how much of it is really relevant what is the notice period uh, what is the expected compensation as against what is offered uh, and what is the total number of years experience and uh, finally last but not the least is the candidate staying close by so all these uh, various uh, factors are assigned different weightage in this Excel uh, worksheet and uh, after multiplying these values by the weightages you get one number that is the suitability score and then uh, you have all the resumes what are 20 to 50 ranked in the descending order of their suitability scores so you immediately within a minute or two minute come to know uh, who are the top ranking candidates and you can start calling otherwise this would take you all day long to decide suitability and then call those uh, who are really good so that is the reward that you get which is instantly magically you getting this uh, tracker and you do this again and again for a number of uh, different openings and that goes on uh, building your investment you stay invested because this uses natural language processing so as you are parsing more and more resumes to calculate score it starts learning newer newer words that are that it is coming across and it becomes smarter and also it is uh, learning what you like and what you don't like so as uh, the same tracker or uh, uh, worksheet is being used uh, it has buttons for calling candidates for interview so it is also recording the history of who is really getting called for interview what are the uh, criteria which are really uh, uh, having importance and based on that uh, the weightages are getting recalculated uh, for uh, future uh, future openings so uh, which is what is the smart learning smart way of uh, using machine learning to get improved results with each iteration so 
once you start getting these improved results because of uh, your history of usage is already there with this app it is very hard for you to move away from this app because it knows the kind of words that candidates use it has you have already taught the meaning of those words to this you already taught what kind of uh, pref what is uh, really preferred by you and uh, if it is all this is stored uh, in some kind of knowledge base in this app uh, you would hate to move away from this app so that is the investment part so this is the hook model applied uh, to our problem of building an engaging user experience for uh, a, a IT recruiter augmented IT recruiter or an applicant tracking system if you will so with this uh, let us see what are the main challenges and features that we uh, you know there are one or two things only we can cover now in this short period so but let's dive a little deep which is uh, uh, very interesting so the challenge number one is that resumes keep having new words for technologies and technical terms are unrecognizable so you have uh, every day like uh, you know with uh, the hadoop ecosystem you have all sorts of like hadoop edge base uh, map bar cloud era uh, uh, then you have mahout and uh, you know there are n number of uh, nutch uh, and there are n number of new terms or new technologies that uh, you would come across and uh, those terms have special meanings so assigning that meaning to these terms itself is a challenge the second challenge is uh, candidates are learning those new skills which are not even existent today so even if i capture all the words that i know today that are uh, likely to be there uh, what about tomorrow there like you know there are new advancements in big data analytics cloud computing mobile programming and every day some new technologies blockchain so there will be some new terms that will come up tomorrow that you don't even know today so your app needs to uh, not only have a very rich uh, dictionary or directory of all the terms that exist today but it also has to have the capability of learning new terms and the user should be able to teach it those new terms uh, so uh, user uh, trainable app is what uh, we would call it that is the challenge uh, and recruiters are like you know they are not very uh, heavy on technology so if you uh, make this challenging task look difficult to them it gives them a sense of uh, 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 you know using which is uh, a little complex and that that would uh, you know that would not be good because they will then go away from the app because they they want something simple and easy to use because uh, uh, finally they they have been doing they have been doing most of their work using uh, microsoft word and browsers and uh, uh, maybe at the most a worksheet such as excel uh, there's nothing beyond that no uh, complex application beyond that uh, is uh, going to be palatable to the targets uh, or target of it recruiters so uh, they really want something uh, that gets smarter as they use it and they want to master by teaching it but they want this whole thing to be easy to use and easy to master so that's the challenge so let's uh, go a little deep so uh, applying the hook model that we talked about some time back let's first course focus our attention on the action part so whenever the user is taking any action such as pointing to a folder that is containing all the resumes and then immediately the parser should be able to extract all the important information like contact details education technical expertise relevant project experience in you know maybe for 50 odd resumes in less than a minute now if that happens the experience would be magically smooth so let's see let's target to first get him that uh, magical experience so that he should feel like taking that action 
of pointing to a folder which contains the resume. So, uh, what are the execution challenges? So, for parsing, we use a natural language processing library called Gate. Now, the problem with Gate is that it is single threaded. So, if you have uh, training uh, of uh, uh, you know various ontologies and uh, gazetteers uh, that training cannot be done by a single user you have to have multiple users training your ontology and gazetteers and all that now uh, but the gate server itself is single threaded and uh, one gate server uses uh, only uh, one set of ontology and gazetteers. So you can't have uh, multiple uh, users updating a single ontology. So that's a big challenge. Also, there is some kind of memory leak issue which is very well known and which is being discussed uh, in various forums uh, such as Stack Overflow and uh, you can even look up gates uh, support documentation that after some time, maybe after a day or two, uh, the gate server crashes and our experience is every couple of days we have to restart the server because there is some memory leak. It becomes slow and gradually it just starts timing out. So uh, maybe after parsing uh, 100 or 200 or 500 uh, resumes, the gate server becomes very slow and when it restarts, it's fine again. So. Uh, this so far it was a task which was given to operations folks and they used to restart the server at night uh, just to just so that nobody uh, really nobody uh, it doesn't break anyone's work other problem with gate is that if you have some kind of funny character a special character or something getting into a rogue resume which has you know if somebody has uh, really played with the images and uh, some kind of media that he is using to embellish his resume but uh, you know you put this resume which may be a word document in the gate parser and it uh, just uh, hangs and hangs and it just times out so uh, and then you have to restart it there's no way that uh, so all other uh, documents keep waiting for this to happen so that's another task and uh, parallel processing is what we need here uh, so as you can see the solution is that we need to process in parallel if you really want to get speed and reliability so that you are not dependent on one server so uh, at the same time uh, you should be able to update uh, so if there are any uh, writes happening to the ontology or to the gazetteer uh, that has to happen centrally to one ontology in one gazette here. So let's now break down this problem into multiple problems that we stated and then see one by one how we solve the problem. So first let's see the uh, how we solve the problem of get being single threaded. So let us recap the problem. So here's a user and he submits a resume to the get server and get server uses uh, the ontology or it updates the ontology. So very good uh, when there is one user but the moment you have another user coming up you he cannot use the same gate server so he has his own uh, instance of gate server and his own instance of ontology so whatever uh, he writes uh, to the ontology if he comes across a new word and he uh, associates it with some kind of class in the ontology that knowledge is not going to be uh, available to everyone it will be local uh, stored locally in his ontology so this solution is not going to work so instead of that what we decided is let's say if you have a user one having one document user two and maybe n users having multiple resumes what we decided is that we will use a web server and a singleton pattern wherein you have only one gate server uh, which is associated with one web server which is taking multiple uh, to which multiple users are uh, talking and this web server is the single user of the gate server so gate server is a single threaded application so the web server is being a single user but then what happens to multiple users submitting multiple documents so we use a queue 
and uh, you know uh, we can queue up those documents uh, to be processed in series one after the other and that is how uh, you we end up having a common ontology which is dealing with the uh, resume submitted by all the users and whatever updates that they do uh, to the ontology also uh, are uh, getting updated uh, to the same ontology so that uh, everyone is using uh, getting the benefit of so one user uh, if he adds a word to the ontology the benefit of that is enjoyed by all other users so this is one challenge uh, that we overcame the second challenge is uh, the process of parsing is inherently slow and error prone as we saw so if you have uh, say one document uh, then uh, it, we have a pre processing so the document is first converted from docx to html and then uh, there is a parser that is the gate uh, server to which it is submitted now uh, as we saw that for whatever reason if the gate uh, parser is uh, timing out we need to uh, make sure that the user gets a very uh, good error message saying that so the user shouldn't have to wait for too long so we decided that uh, uh, you know 60 seconds is the maximum even 60 seconds would be even less but we decided on 60 seconds uh, is what we will allow a gate parser to work on a document and we are sure that however long even if it's a 15 page resume it should not take longer than 60 seconds so that's all we allow now uh, that is uh, you know one thing that you have uh, allowed for some time for the uh, parser to parse but what about the preprocessor so if the timeout for the preprocessor uh, has to be a little more than what we allow for the parser because they should not uh, it should not so happen that uh, the uh, the preprocessor has timed out before gate has even returned so uh, we allow uh, time of 90 seconds for the preprocessor so that is this way of uh, ensuring that the user gets a graceful error message is a circuit breaker pattern so the, so this this is one way of taking care of uh, uh, graceful uh, recovery uh, or graceful error messaging but that's not enough uh, we have other problems to deal with now that those are solved primarily by having a cloud native uh, containerized microservice orchestrated by kubernetes so let's see how we do it so we have an input queue in which let's say you put six uh, resumes and then uh, you have one instance uh, by default running one kubernetes pod and that pod contains your preprocessor and gate server uh, inside that pod and that is being used as a service this is a simplified diagram and it uh, quickly processes those uh, six resumes as you can see in the uh, uh, on the right hand top corner there is a bar chart showing the time taken so uh, very quickly it will take i think uh, less than six seconds to process six resumes uh, uh, normally it doesn't take longer than that but if we were to have a rogue resume like uh, uh, you know it is having some special character which is and that is the seventh one uh, it uh, spins off a new pod because uh, we have uh, configured kubernetes such that it looks at the size of the queue and decides that after six it is going to spin off a new pod to deal with an additional uh, resume in the queue so it will spin off a new pod but then uh, you know when the rogue document gets into that uh, instance or that uh, container uh, it's going to hang because uh, the gate server is not it's going to eventually time out and uh, you know there's no point uh, because it also becomes slow so there's no point keeping that so uh, essentially uh, we need to kill it but before that we want to do something with the uh, with the document uh, the back document so we put it in a dead letter queue and after doing so we 
restart uh, or just kill that uh, instance uh, or kill that uh, uh, pod and recreate a new pod so now you have two pods and you know uh, if uh, even if 12 uh, resumes come two pods are good enough to deal with 12 resumes and they can you know it takes a little longer uh, it is it should it's not double but it's a little longer than uh, six resumes and similarly if you have 24 resumes it will spin off two additional pods and will uh, process 24 resumes and put them on output queue. It will not take double the time, but it will take slightly more uh, because whatever time it takes to spin off additional uh, pods with additional uh, uh, containers, Docker containers. So uh, then you uh, hit a wall because now you have uh, the capacity to work with 24 resumes at a time but uh, you have consumed all the resources of your instance uh, which is a aws uh, so currently whatever instance uh, i think it is m4 or m2 medium whatever we are using that instance is uh, being consumed so if you get let's say 24 in that case uh, you, you you don't have a place where you can uh, Kubernetes can add any more pods with any more Docker containers. So it's going to spin off an additional instance and then you will be able to process 24. But this is going to take uh, much more time. It's not proportionate as you can see in the right hand top corner. The bar chart shows that for 48 resume it's going to like uh, take much longer than what it would take for 24 resumes. So, uh, but this is good enough uh, for us uh, since it is not going to take more than a minute or so, uh, which is good enough to uh, meet the challenge that we had. So it not only deals uh, uh, with uh, parallel processing and getting a quick turnaround for resumes, but also it deals with uh, problem resumes. And uh, we also have uh, a, a regular count a counter that gets incremented in every pod so after it, uh, every resume is processed it increments a counter and we can configure the number of maximum number of resumes that a particular pod is allowed to process so let's say it is 100 so after 100 that pod kills itself and uh, automatically kubernetes will spin off uh, the next pod so uh, the problem of having to restart the server every uh, night or midnight that doesn't exist here because it is a self-managing process that after a certain number of uh, resumes are processed it will restart itself by killing a pod uh, and automatically recreating a new one so let's take a summary of what we saw so uh, we First, we saw how we created a singleton gate server that works on multiple requests by serially uh, using the queue. We, in this case, we are using RabbitMQ. We also saw how Kubernetes is used to create multiple instances uh, and have Docker container in those instances. We are using AWS and uh, Kubernetes to orchestrate and we also saw the circuit breaker for consistent performance and the container is killed if it times out and the document that is being processed in that container is put in the dead letter queue and also we saw that after a certain number of uh, documents the container restarts itself uh, after servicing a fixed number of uh, requests and this is a configurable number so uh, this is how we made the action smooth. So going back, what we were setting out was to make the action smooth. You point to a folder containing 50 resumes and in a Jiffy, it parses the resumes and uh, you know it gets you the details that are inside the resume. So, but that is half done. We have more work to do. Uh, we have to provide the reward. Just having a quick action 
uh, is not enough but we have to equally quickly uh, give some kind of reward and in this case the reward is providing uh, quickly ranking the resumes in the order of suitability score in a tracker so uh, a suitability score is nothing but sum of weighted score of various criteria like education technical expertise relevant experience proximity notice period and expected compensation etc so this is the reward uh, that uh, and there is some level of suspense it's a variable reward you don't know who will come on top and who will come uh, second and all that so there is always this curiosity that is there in the mind of uh, the recruiter who has now uh, let's say 20 to 50 odd resumes to which he has pointed the app now let us see what are the challenges so the first challenge is that of missing information so if you look at the resume as shown in the colorful picture on the left hand side it has some heading fields not top level fields and some uh, so uh, there are detailed fields like a uh, name of it, contact details objective with you know the target designation that the objective states and the role that uh, the candidate is seeking or the overview talks about his overall experience uh, prior to this the skill set has a bunch of technologies that he is listing there and then there is education details with the year of education the institute from where he passed out the degree that he obtained and which branch uh, of technology etc and there could be a couple of those records for the graduate and postgraduate and all that and then there could be experience records such as, uh, uh, you know, from which year to which year, which company, what was the designation and all that for multiple companies. And there could be project details where, you know, the project also could be for a period from certain month to certain month for a client and a bit of a description of the project, which technologies were used for the project, if there is a URL where that project can be seen and what are the what was the candidate actually doing, what were the responsibilities they were actually handling on this project. And there could be multiple such projects and at the bottom he could be mentioning some kind of rewards and certifications that he has got and the sports and hobbies and you know his uh, local address or his permanent address and a footnote and a disclaimer and all that. So uh, the uh, you know with the ontology having all the words it is very easy for it to determine these terms so it can determine that okay this term looks like a degree or this term looks like a technology or this term looks like a company so getting individual uh, terms which are in all these colorful boxes uh, uh, you can take any other colorful box that is there in front of you and that is easily detectable because of the ontology uh, which is trained by users uh, and which assigns meaning to these terms but what we are really interested in combination of those terms giving heading level details like the colors that you see like the dark blue color is for multiple projects so uh, you are required to uh, take this entire area which is colored in dark blue and identify this part of the resume uh, as uh, text that is talking about uh, projects but in uh, reality what is happening is uh, you know not everything is getting detected for example out of the two areas of education only one is getting detected and uh, when it starts detecting company experience it uh, also sees that from to and client it all looks like uh, even the project record starts looking like uh, company record to it and it says it thinks that uh, it's company experience so uh, there is ambiguity there and when it starts detecting the project experience some of project one's uh, details are uh, project two's details are being detected by uh, the program as project one details and project two is overflowing into awards and certificates and projects and hobbies and everything is being detected as a project record so it's becoming uh, so if we were to evaluate let's say what is the relevant experience the candidate has how many projects he has worked on, how many companies he has worked with, all that becomes a big challenge because 
though that information is there we don't know the correlation that uh, the year corresponds to which company so you see that it's a year but you don't know it's a from year or a two year and for which company it is so that is a big challenge so uh, uh, detecting uh, properly grouping these records under certain headings is a challenge so we overcame this problem uh, by first uh, applying machine learning so we had manual annotators who sat down and actually took more than 1000 resumes and each of those resumes we marked out these areas to be associated with headings such as experience or project or education after doing that we modeled uh, this as an n-way classification problem with each heading as a class and the terms inside the heading as features and also the location at which that term is appearing also as a feature and finally we achieved with this 98 percent accuracy and 95 percent recall so accuracy means uh, whatever was being detected as a area under certain heading let's say if it says that it's an education 98 percent chance is that it's an education but the recall was a problem that only 95 percent of all the education records were really detected as education or 95 percent of all the pro so there is some loss of information that happens here but for now which is good enough for us to do the ranking and to uh, get so this 95 percent of the information that is in the resume was getting captured uh, so which is uh, good enough and you know as we go on training as the training set is currently only 1000 resumes but as more and more resumes are getting parsed by this app and uh, corrections are being uh, affected by the recruiters it learns and becomes smarter so this both the accuracy and recall go on improving as the training set goes on increasing so that's the hope with which we are currently working uh, the second challenge is that okay we have all the data but uh, you know how do you calculate the suitability you know that this person uh, there is a requirement of three to five years experience and this person has uh, let's say two and a half years experience now uh, how what should be the score that is one thing and what should be the weightage that you should be assigning to it should it be should the score be zero or should it be uh, eight or should it be five of course if it if he was plumb in the middle of three and five he would get ten but if he was slightly less should he get eight or should he get ten that is one question and second is what should be the weightage assigned to it how important is the experience as counted in number of years so the ranking was largely dependent on the weightages assigned so if you change the weightage it would change the ranking so the suitability criteria like education, relevant experience, notice period have different importance for different companies and different hiring managers. So it's a very uh, dependent thing. So uh, historically looking at past data only will give us an idea as to what should be the weightage assigned. So uh, that is what exactly we did was uh, we looked at the historical data and applied the, uh, we collected past information of resumes that, that were shortlisted for an interview in the company for specific projects and modeled it as a logistic regression problem uh, with a vector of weightages being uh, theta in the sigmoid function so essentially theta shows uh, the number of uh, vector or uh, each uh, value that is assigned to the weightages and uh, the sigmoid function shows the probability uh, of uh, the uh, the resume being selected so higher the probability the chances of selection are higher so with this uh, training set we were able to train this function and get the weightages theta weightages for certain uh, companies for certain type of openings and as the number of uh, as the uh, uh, managers were selecting resumes this information was feeding into uh, this data or training set either selecting or rejecting resumes that was getting into the data set and this 
uh, set of weightages was uh, becoming more and more accurate and it is the process is ongoing and still on that's the solution we applied so uh, that is how you finally give them the reward uh, uh, that you have a excel worksheet with uh, resumes which are ranked and they would come and work with multiple openings every time they have so we see this behavior becoming a habit that uh, IT recruiters keep coming to a, to the application and keep working with uh, different types of uh, openings with different resume sets. Maybe some cases there may be 10 resumes, in some cases there may be 50 depending on how, what is the technology or what is the level of seniority they are looking at. So, you know, how do you make sure that they stay invested? So. Uh, as the frequency of use and number of users increases, more terms get added to the ontology. So that means that if somebody, some competitor were to compete with this app, the uh, threshold or entry barrier would be high because he or uh, that new competitor will have to start with all those uh, terms that are already there in the ontology. So that is uh, one thing that keeps users invested because they have trained the ontology by assigning meaning to different terms and all that knowledge base is now uh, there in this app. So they will have to come back here to use that uh, knowledge base. The second is the accuracy and recall in parsing and headings is improving as you will see. So that is another reason that uh, if they were to start again all over then uh, they would have to start from a low accuracy and low recall and gradually train the new app for that. So instead now they're getting uh, getting the benefit of their prior use of uh, the app. And finally the weightages as we saw are becoming. So uh, as you can see the number of terms we started initially there has to be 700-800 unannotated terms that needed to be added to the ontology. And as we drew close to a thousand or two thousand resumes, uh, the number of terms has reduced to one tenth. Now we have hardly 50 or 60 terms that are unannotated in any resume, and most of them are not really relevant, but they are there. So, uh, this uh, graph shows how uh, exponentially the uh, number of unannotated terms that you encounter in a resume go on reducing as you go on training uh, your ontology. The second benefit that happens is accuracy and recall go on climbing. Uh, of course they finally uh, uh, become asymptotical uh, reason being obviously they, nothing can reach 100%. Uh, so close to 100% they will go asymptotical but uh, you know, so the user cannot start all over with a new app because uh, he would have to start with low accuracy and low, low recall. Uh, so uh, by using something that he has used before, he is getting the benefit of higher accuracy and higher recall as more resumes are parsed, more corrections are manually done, more terms are recognized, uh, more headings and more areas get associated and the training set becomes larger and the weightages and the recall uh, and the accuracy both improve. So finally to conclude, uh, high tech uh, is being used here for in building engaging user experience. Machine learning models become smarter with continued use which keeps the user invested in the applications. Past history of usage is his investment and cloud native containerized microservices is a way of building a very smooth and magically fast, consistent and uh, reliable response. So thank you very much uh, and if you have any questions, please do let me know and uh, I'll be here to answer those questions for the next few minutes. Thank you.